Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. I thought we'd go over a few issues raised by various comments I've received. Today, is the Bible full of myths? To answer this question, we need to first understand what a myth is. Dictionary.com offers the following definitions of the word myth. Number one, a traditional or legendary story, usually concerning some being or hero or event, with or without a determinable basis in fact, or a natural explanation, especially one that is concerned with deities or demigods, and explains some practice, rite, or phenomenon of nature. Number two, stories or matter of this kind. Number three, any invented story, idea, or concept. Number four, an imaginary or fictitious thing or person. Number five, an unproved or false collective belief that is used to justify a social institution. As you can see, there are many definitions of the word myth, and they vary greatly, with the first two implying no real falsehood at all, and the last three explicitly denying or challenging the truth of the accounts. For this reason, it's important to outline what one means when using the word myth to describe the Bible, before we can tell whether this claim is true or false. The Bible does contain many stories and matter of a traditional and or legendary nature concerning beings, heroes, or events, both with and without determinable bases in fact, especially ones concerned with a deity, and even a few that explain practices, rites, and phenomena of nature. Therefore, if you confine yourself to the first two definitions, it would be correct to say that the Bible contains myths. However, even there, it's not correct to say that it's full of myths, since many books of the Bible, such as the Psalms and the Book of Proverbs, don't contain any stories or legendary accounts at all. This question is different, however, when you move on to the third and fourth definitions, which specifically imply that a story must be invented, fictitious, or imaginary in order to qualify. Because claiming that the Bible is full of myths is a positive claim about what the Bible is, the burden of proof therefore falls on the person making this claim. Can they prove that those who wrote the books of the Bible were writing them as fiction? Can they prove that they were writing them to be imaginary stories? Can they prove that the events described by the scriptures were invented by someone? Unless they can prove one of these three things, which I've never heard done, there's no good reason to believe that the Bible is full of myths in the third or fourth sense. What about the last? Well, obviously you'd need to be able to show that the stories in the Bible are either false or unproved. Showing that they're false is almost as challenging as showing that they're imaginary, and I've never heard anyone do that either. But the real kicker is the last point showing that they're unproved, and this is an issue that I almost never hear atheists address. Your typical atheist position on the unproven is just, well, I'm not convinced that something is true, therefore it must be unproven. However, traditionally there have always been specific ways to prove something, none of which involve convincing people who don't want to be convinced. Airtight logic, for instance, could be used as proof of something. There's mathematical and scientific proof, but the one I really want to draw attention to is the proof of perception. This is the sort of proof we have whenever we see something happening right in front of us. For instance, if we see a cat run out into the road, this proves to us that a cat ran out into the road. If this kind of proof can validate the events of the Bible, then it is not unproven, as the skeptic claims. So, where is this proof to be found? The answer is that any of the people who experienced the events described in the Bible received proof of perception, confirming that those events took place. Now, of course, the skeptic will question whether those people even really existed, but keep in mind, in order to show that the events of the Bible are unproven, they must prove that point themselves. It is therefore up to the skeptic to provide evidence that the people of the Bible didn't really exist, and I've never seen any skeptic successfully do that with even a single figure of scripture. So we have no good reason to think that the events of the Bible are invented, fictitious, imaginary, false, or unproven, and therefore no reason to think by the third, fourth, and fifth definitions of the term that the Bible is full of myths. Next, what's the real definition of atheism, and why? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.